So over the past year or so, I've done a lot of videos where I read seven books in seven days. And they're one of my favorite videos to film, even though they're always an emotional challenge. <laughs> but I love doing them as videos. So we're gonna do it again. And I was trying to think of like, what theme do I wanna go with next? Sometimes I read seven horror books or seven mystery books in a specific week. Sometimes I've done seven readathons where I have to do a different readathon every day. And I thought this time we would do genres. So I'm gonna read seven genres in seven days. I have to read a different genre every single day and that's because I love reading a wide array of genres. For me a good reading month is when I've read like a genre here, a genre there. I see a good mix in my wrap up at the end of the month in the books that I've read and the genres that I've read. So we're going to read a different one every single day this week. I don't know how it's going to go. I don't really have a ton of plans for books that I'm going to read but let's just get started with it shall we? But before we get into the video I want to take a few minutes to tell you about something very very exciting. When reading your favourite Greek mythology books have you ever wished you could be Circe, sorceress, in touch with the land, in touch with the flowers, and witch, a magician? Have you ever wished you could be like Achilles on the battlefield, spearing your enemies, feeling the the rage and the and the atmosphere of the Greek battle? And for some reason when I was seeing these clips I thought Ariadne fell in love with the Minotaur but then I remembered she falls in love with the guy who kills the Minotaur. So maybe you've read fan fic where Ariadne falls in love with the Minotaur and you want to relive that. Well, now you can because I'm holding a group trip to Greece! Ah! <laughs> so excited! <laughs> So a lot of you will know I am hosting a group trip to Costa Rica but some of you couldn't make it and you're like Megan can you hold another one? There seemed to be a lot of excitement about another one so I'm holding another one and we're going to Greece. I knew I wanted to do a Europe one next for those of you more on the Europe side that may be easier to get to or for those of you in the US who want to come to Europe and I've never been to Greece. I've always wanted to so that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be going on a group trip to Greece. Let me tell you all the details quickly. We are going to be going to Greece, specifically Crete, the island of of Crete, this whole trip is on the island of Crete from the 1st of October to the 7th of October 2024. Greece 2024 baby! <laughs> I wanted to do a trip that was quite a far away in the future to give those of you time to save up because I know they are expensive, I know they're not accessible to everyone so I hoped that by making a bit further in the future I would be able to make it a bit more accessible. In terms of price we have 10 early bird spots at the time of filming two of those already taken by my patrons because I gave them early access to it so there's eight left at the price of $2,799 which is about £2,294. Now you only need to pay 25% of this to secure your spot. You do not need to pay the whole amount in one go in order to book this trip. You only need to pay 25% and then you have till about 90 days pre-trip to pay the remainder. So you've got basically nine months to pay the rest. So you don't have to rush in paying. And then after those 10 early bird spots are gone, it's $100 more expensive. So if you book early, you get a $100 discount. It will be $2,899 or I'll put the conversion rates for some currencies here as well. So yeah, that's the price. That's the date. Shall we get into quickly the itinerary and what is included in this trip? If you've seen other people doing travel trips, you probably have a kind of idea of what is included. So we have a local tour guide with us, with the group, the entire time. They know the area off by heart. They'll be handling all the organisational elements so that we can just have a fun time. They're an expert in the area. So that's such a benefit. It's not just a usual holiday. Obviously you have me being the host <laughs> and being there with you guys the whole time. But we also have a local tour guide who kind of guides us around the area and holds our hand through the trip as well. Some food is included on this one. It's six breakfasts, so all the breakfasts, three lunches and two dinners are included in the price. Your transfers to and from the airport when you arrive and when we leave. We have free transfers to and from the airport. We have free transfers when we travel to all the activities, when we travel from place to place on Crete. We have accommodation included in wonderful hotels. You guys gotta go check out the listing and check out the hotels. The hotels are incredible. Um, go check out those. You have shared accommodation, so you'll be sharing with one other traveller, but you can pay a little bit extra if you want a private room on this trip or I know some people bring a friend and you'd be automatically room with your friend for no extra if you come on this trip. So let's get into quickly running through the itinerary. If you guys have any questions I'll be running a Q&A on my Instagram when this video goes up and you can also ask any questions you have down below. But we'll run through the itinerary quickly for those of you that are interested. So day one we arrive, everyone lands, gets settled in the place and we have a welcome dinner. Day two the first thing we do is go to the palace of Knossos which I am ridiculously excited for. Guys if you've ever heard about the myth of Ariadne, of the Minotaur, of the Labyrinth, 
this is the palace where that happened. Ah! Or the place where that myth is set, I should say. So we're gonna go visit the ruins of this palace and I just think this is gonna be, I, I feel like pictures and videos of these kind of sites can't be cap can't capture the magic of them. I'm so excited. Imagine reading, We might you might have read Ariadne, let me just say that before the trip. <laughs> I've been dropping so many hints. You can then imagine the story taking place at the place we are. And then we're gonna visit the Heraklion Archaeological Museum, which I've heard is one of the best archaeological museums in Europe. It's got some ancient stuff, like things like 900 BC. What? Imagine seeing like plates or jugs and stuff from this time. It's absolutely incredible. I've heard really good things about this museum. So then we're gonna go there. Day two, we're in Rathimno and we're going on a Jeep safari. Can you imagine us all like, Whoa! <laughs> We're gonna see incredible sights. We're gonna be on a Jeep safari. And then we go to this magical beach, the Preveli beach and have a swim. It's, this trip is very much like beach relaxing, island getaway, relaxing on a Greek island kind of vibe. So then we go have a nice beach relax. Day four, we visit the Agrupoli waterfalls, which are some of the most beautiful waterfalls. We have lunch there. We take in this picturesque setting. And then we travel to Hania where we're spending the rest of the trip. Day five, we have a guided walking tour around Hania. And like, I'm showing you some of the pictures. This is a beautiful, Greek island town. So we're gonna walk around, taste local delicacies, learn the history, it's gonna be incredible. And then we have the first of our two optional activities. So all of the other activities are included in the price. The first of our optional activities is a monastery visit and wine tour. So that's why this is a little bit extra because we're getting alcohol. So yeah, you taste local wines, taste local snacks and visit this ancient monastery. And also on this day, we're gonna have our Greek mythology book club. So we're gonna have a book club on this trip, of course. And if you guys wanna read books like Circe or Song of Achilles, in preparation for going to Greece, I totally recommend it. <laughs> but our official book club pick, and we will discuss these as well, but our official book club pick is gonna be Ariadne by Jennifer Saint, because this is set on the island of Crete where we are, and I thought also a lot of you have probably read those ones already, so this would be a fun one, if you haven't read it already, or just reread it for the trip, to read, to discuss when we're in that setting, in the location. So this is gonna be our official book club pick, and we'll discuss this and chat about it. Day six is a day for relaxing on the picturesque beaches there, or you can take place in the second optional activity, which is a cruise around some of the caves, the other parts of the island, the other amazing beaches. We'll be visiting some of the most beautiful beaches on Greece, according to many people. There's some of the most beautiful beaches on Greece. So this is a little bit extra. Um, this and the wine tour are the extra optional activities you can do, or you can opt out of if they're not something you're interested in. But we're gonna be on a little cruise for like the whole day. Like it's a seven hour cruise around the island, around the caves, around the seas, around the beaches, and I am so excited and then day seven we say goodbye and travel home so that is a quick rundown of the itinerary i will leave the page link down below if you want to travel with me it is now available to book which is incredibly exciting if you guys want to come join me in greece ask me any questions you have like i said you only need to pay 25 percent to secure your spot and you've got about nine months to pay the rest of it you've got ages until the trip to think about whether this is something you want to do i will keep you updated on my instagram as spots go but i think this is gonna be very popular because greece was by far the most popular destination that you guys wanted to go to. When I put out polls, Greece won every time. You guys want to go Greece, and so do I. I'm very excited to eat all the amazing food there, to see the amazing beaches, and to um, experience the amazing history there as well. So I hope you guys join me if you're able to on this amazing trip. I also do just want to say, full disclosure, this video isn't sponsored by Trova Trip, but I have marked it as paid promotion on the YouTube function because this isn't a sponsorship I'm not being paid to talk about in this video but as part of my role as host if the trip does go ahead I do get to go on the trip for free and I do get paid a certain amount depending on how the trip works that's how how the host role works on Trover trips so I just wanted to be full disclosure about that. This isn't a sponsorship, I'm not actually being paid to talk about this, but I wanted to mark it as paid promotion because of my ongoing work with Trova Trip. So yeah, that's all I'm gonna say. I hope you guys are as excited as I am. Jeep Safari, amazing beaches, visiting ancient ruins. I'm so excited. I think it's gonna be an amazing trip. So hopefully some of you can join me and read Ariadne and be in Greece and it's gonna be amazing. I am so excited. So yeah, I'll leave that with you. We can get into the rest of the video now and I hope you're as excited as I am. <laughs> Good morning, it's Saturday. <laughs> first day, are you crooked? I don't know. Um, first day of this vlog, and today I need something short because something very exciting is happening. Today I am going to London to meet up with some of my patrons, which I've never done before. I'm a bit, I'm nervous. I'm nervous because I like, I don't know, I want it to be fun for everyone. <laughs> so I'm gonna go and meet up with some of my patrons. So I have like, 
no time to read today, really. <laughs> the level of unprofessionalism, far too much. So I want to go on my Goodreads and see, like, let's look at my shortest books and then I'll get the audio book for one of them or something like that. I need something that literally takes no time, right? Other days this week, I'll be reading like a full 350 page book. Do you know what I mean? But today we need something short. So number of pages. I'm also in scribbed jail at the moment, which means like half of the books I'd want to read, not longest. <laughs> right, these are unknown. Um, that's something, oh, the Kamigawa Food Detective, that's a series, do I really want to start that? See, I was thinking Tales from the Cafe before the coffee gets cold, but that'll make me cry. And do I want to cry? I don't want to cry. <laughs> See, I was thinking that the Six Deaths of the Saint, but that's fantasy, and we've got Nestle and Bone, which is fantasy. Here's the thing, right, the Six Deaths of the Saint is historical fantasy, and every book on my TBR is like, historical mystery like do you count that as historical or mystery so i i think i'm allowed <laughs> to count it as my historical of this lock and just not read anything else that's even like vaguely well well you can read other things that's historical but i'm gonna class it as my historical because it is historical keep saying it just keep saying it keep saying it out loud and maybe you will convince hope so yeah i'm gonna go do that because i'm really excited i've heard so many good things about this short story about alexi harrow and i feel like everyone's loved it some people have said it makes them tear up though which isn't the best to listen to whilst you're getting ready but that's what i'm going to do who told you that it was too Okay, it is so late. It's like 11 o'clock. I'm so tired. I just got home from London um, from the meetup. I know I barely filmed anything because I was just like enjoying being in everyone's company. But here's a group picture of us, minus one friend who had to leave early. But um, it was just so amazing meeting everyone. I've never really done anything like that before. And it was just so... I don't know, I had a great time. I had such a great time. We did some book shopping together, we had lunch together. I just had a great time. I had a wonderful day. Um, but I've got to tell you about the book. <laughs> I must confess, this is my other, this is like my mini tripod on the big one. This is like when I put it on my desk, but I'm using it as a microphone <laughs> today. I'm so tired. <laughs> I have decided to be a good person. And although this has a historical setting, I am gonna count this as the fantasy book for this vlog. So what that means is I'm not gonna read Nettle and Bone in this vlog. Life, the, no, I keep calling it the lives of the saints, but it's the six deaths of the saints. I really enjoyed this. I'm gonna give it a four star. I think it could have been stronger if I had read it in a different way. Like I read it whilst I was doing my makeup and then on the train home, just the audio book. And I think perhaps it would have been even stronger book for me if I had read it with like no distraction uninterrupted because it is only like 30 pages. But I think it is like an almost perfect short story. Like what it manages to do and say and make you feel and make you believe in 30 pages is frankly insane. <laughs> like Miss Alex, wow. But I can't give you a synopsis. I've tried to think of it guys, I'm so tired. It's, <laughs> it's kind of about like a young girl who's made a fighter for a king. Let's just say that. That's basically what we need to know. But I think it was so, it reminded me of what I loved about Alexi Harris writing in The Once Future Witches and what I'm so excited to read in Starling House and all her other books is where it's got this like, uh, this, so this is something that some of my favourite authors have. I feel like Sean Maguire has this to some extent. I'm trying to think of who else, but like write stuff that has a very unique slant on uh, reality or like writes fantasy that almost comes up with new conventions, like comes up with new ideas, I feel like. And I feel like, I mean, there's no idea is a new idea, like everything's been done for, yada, yada. But there's something in this and the concept of what this is that like feels so fresh and feels so new and feels so magical and feels so imaginative that I really enjoyed. It just wasn't a five star. Do you know what I mean? It wasn't a five star for me, but it could have been in a, if I didn't, if I had read it in a different circumstance. Please excuse the shoddy day, day one to this, but I'm not one of those people that forgive and forget. I'm one of those people that fucking take score. 
but it's reality, you know? I gotta read a book a day and a different genre every day. And today was a busy day meeting friends. So tomorrow, tomorrow morning and maybe into the afternoon, I'm gonna be editing the last vlog that you would have seen. <laughs> last week's vlog for you, but like still this week's vlog for me. So I need to edit that um, tomorrow. So I probably won't check in with you until that is done. And then depending on how late that is and if there's anything like I want to do with my family, I want to go for a run tomorrow evening. So we'll just see where we're at. Tomorrow might be a good day for Saga Volume 2. That could be a good one. And then we get into more of the longer books in the week. Because the weekend I'm trying to spend time with my family as well, you know. So that might be it. Also, we went into Forbidden Planet and I was going to buy Saga Volume 3 because I know I'm probably going to read Saga Volume 2 in this log. And it was the only one from Volume 1 to 9 they didn't have. They had every other volume. <laughs> So I tried, I tried to buy, you know, a book that would make progress in the series, but instead I brought a standalone Scooby Dooby Doo. I almost also brought um, Lights, which is the finale to the Sheets graphic novel series, forgetting I ordered it yesterday. Like, I almost very nearly forgot that. Okay, I'm leaving. Good night. I'm gonna go sleep. <laughs> Okie dokie. So it is like nine o'clock. <laughs> What time is it? Half nine. Um, I spent the whole day editing my Strange Case Alchemist Daughter inspired books video, whatever you want to call it. It hasn't really got a proper name. And then it got copyright claimed right as I uploaded it. <laughs> yeah. Woo! I love spending my weekends doing something and then it doesn't even work out. But it's okay. I was probably, I've forgotten that copyright claims are even a thing because I haven't gotten one in like a year, but I probably was a bit bold with some of the stuff. <laughs> That I uh, that I put in that video. I think I just I deserve to get a copyright claim. So it's okay. It's not the end of the world. But we are gonna pick up Saga Volume Two today as our sci-fi pick. This I'm you know I started this vlog with probably like the smallest books that we're gonna read just because it's been the weekend and I've been busy. But I've got a bit more you know wiggle room, shall we say, in the week. So anyways, I'm really excited to read this. I it's been almost a year since I read the first one. Maybe I'll read like one a year. Never catch up. But um, I'm really excited. These are really fun, really quick, really enjoyable. So I'm going to go ahead and read this now. the most obscene image I've ever seen. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. My eyeballs. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> okay, dokie. I just finished. Whoa, this like, it's very dark in my room and my camera's trying to like deal with it and it made me very red <laughs> for a second there. Like, skirt. <laughs> oh, it's bothering me. I don't like this shit. I, I just went up with like everything, but this is like, it's my face. I finished Saga Volume 2. I really enjoyed, I might have even enjoyed this one more than the first one. I really enjoyed, I probably need to read them quicker than I currently am though, because there were a few characters, I remembered who almost everyone was, and there were a few I was like, oh, I can't remember what your backstory is, girl. Like at the end, there was a few people who had like 10 pages of storyline, and I was like, anyways, so. <laughs> But basically, all you need to know about this series is we're following a young couple with a baby and the book is told, the series is told from like the baby's perspective when they've like grown up being like, oh, look at my parents, blah, 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 and like telling the story like as I guess it's been told to them kind of. In this one, we meet some of the grandparents and the storyline from the first one continues where like they're basically being chased down because people want to kill them because like they're like, parts of two different kinds of people who are at war and like the fact that they've had a baby together is like major major issue like this is a PR issue like <laughs> they're not allowed to do this so yeah they're kind of like 
supposed to be enemies, but they're lovers. And I really enjoyed this one. The thing about this series is it's violent. People can, people can die, just like, just never be attached to anyone because everyone dies. Like you'll meet a cute character for two seconds, dead. <laughs> no one lives. And it is a little bit like sexually uh, strong. <laughs> what the word is but like it's very adult in its themes but I really enjoyed this one I really enjoyed the storylines that we had like obviously it's a graphic novel it's sci-fi it's fast-paced it's off you got like you're being bombarded with world building and like fucking political intrigue and characters and like all, all this stuff happening in such a short space of time but also there was stuff in this one about like family and like appreciating the people we love I'm like I don't know I really enjoyed it so I'm gonna give this four stars and now for the rest of the vlog we will be reading longer books well she says this I you know <laughs> we'll be reading longer books we've done fantasy and we've done sci-fi so I think the next one tomorrow I am definitely gonna pick up The Golden Spoon by Jessa Maxwell this has been on TBR Cluedo for a while I think last month I put it on there and it's only about 270 pages so I think I can get a good ways through it I'm really excited so this will be mystery so I think we will start this tomorrow and I'll check in with you when I'm a little bit of a way through it <laughs> you so handsome Ooh. what's going on thank you he really likes to kill my hair. Oh, Mika. <laughs> Whoa. He's a killer. He just loves playing with my hair. Don't you? Can I film? Okay, you just keep keeping yourself amused, Miko. So, hello. It's so the next day. As you can tell, it's quite late. <laughs> it's like half nine. But I did end up picking up The Golden Spoon by Jessa Maxwell <laughs> as my mystery for this vlog. Oh my God, Nico. Okay, he's just having fun. I'm just gonna let him do what he wants. I picked up The Golden Spoon. I'm really enjoying this. <laughs> I'm really enjoying it, guys. So basically the premise of this is imagine Great British Bake Off, but American version called Bake Week. Oh, I've got to go and let him out. <laughs> they're all staying at this like lovely manor where they're filming the show as well. And we have like a prologue that seems to be like there's some murder happens at some point, it's a storm. But then we go back to like the start of the week, right? And we're kind of, we're following the perspectives of each of the bakers and the host whose house it is. So we're following each of their perspectives and I'm just, it's fun. <laughs> Love a bit of drama. I've always said when I was gonna read this, like I'm not expecting high literature, I'm expecting fun and it's giving fun. Bake Off in the UK Bake Off actually comes back tomorrow for the new season. <laughs> the new season starts tomorrow. So I feel like this is just perfectly timed because I'm like, oh my God, I can watch Bake Off tomorrow. <laughs> I think it's striking a perfect balance between a mystery, but also like chatting about the baking. There's a lot of baking chat in this. If you're a baking fan, <laughs> There's a lot of like, I add the sugar, then I add the flour. My mum's talking to the cat outside. <laughs> so I think it has got this lovely cozy energy to it and talking about how the show is cozy and they will love the show because of this. And there's a really interesting cast of characters as well. I think we've got a really interesting cast of bakers, but it does feel low stakes, a little bit silly, cozy. I'm just, I'm really enjoying it. <laughs> My one critique, you know, this is about 270 pages and I'm 100 pages in. So I'm not far off of halfway. And there has been, and I don't think there is going to be for quite some time, like any real uh, intimation of like murder or like mis like mystery. There's like little tiny, like minuscule crumbs of mysteries. <laughs> They're giving me crumbs. Oh my God, it's a baking show. I've connected the two dots. You didn't connect shit, but I've connected them. But there's nothing really like solid. And I'm a bit worried we're gonna read this whole book just kind of knowing that, oh, at the end, something bad's gonna happen. That's not enough to coast me through it. If you think of the guest list by Lucy Foley, you find out right at the beginning of that, someone's been murdered. Then you go back in time to, you know, the start of the wedding weekend and go through time leading up to the murder. But that is interspersed with like little flash forwards as to what's happening as the murder happens. And maybe this needed that just to keep the suspense a little bit. Cause I feel like it's gonna be like page 200 until 
we actually start getting murdery. Do you know what I mean? I don't know, I could be wrong. But yeah, listen, baking going wrong. We've got characters who I feel like just are well enough flesh. Like murder me, I never really need to like truly incredibly, or I, I do like flesh out characters, but if it doesn't have them and they're just like cute and cozy, I can deal with it. But they've got a bit of grit to them. I don't know, I'm really enjoying it guys. I don't think it's a five star, but I think it's gonna be a really solid four. And I think it's just, I mean, who knows? It could become a five, but I'm really, I'm like kind of shocked by how much I'm enjoying it because it hasn't had the best ratings, but I love baking. <laughs> Started making it, had a breakdown. <laughs> bon appetit. <laughs> so I'm really enjoying this. Now in terms of how much I'm gonna finish today, because obviously it's like seven on and seven days, I never end up reading actually one book a day because sometimes it's a struggle. Today I've been very busy, but I think I might actually finish this tonight. I just probably won't talk to you again because it's like half nine now, but it does read very, very fast. So I think I'm gonna get close to finishing it tonight, if not finishing it, but I will probably check in with you first thing in the morning on my thoughts. So anyways, let's go get in bed and get reading because I can't believe how much I'm enjoying it. Also, I know I'm breaking the fourth wall, <laughs> but I just wanted to say, I realized I forgot to say, that we've been getting some really interesting backstories for the bakers where everything is not as it seems. And it's starting to get like, I feel like everyone's gonna have a secret. And I really love that in a book when everyone has like a secret about their true motivations or who they are. So I'm really enjoying the backstories of the characters. Okay, back to reading. <laughs> Okey-dokey. So I finished The Golden Spoon first thing this morning and this one's a difficult one to rate. It's tricky <laughs> because I don't think this is very good, but I had a really fun time reading it. <laughs> so I don't know what to rate it. You know, with the second half, I had a lot of fun reading it. But the murder happens objectively way too late. There's objectively no mystery really moving this forward. The characters, the writing, there's moments where the writing, you know, isn't the best. There's a lot of description in this book. And when it comes to the baking, I enjoy that. Like a lot of description going into the baking. Like you have to have that in a baking book, right? Like going into detail how they're baking this, or what they're doing and the act of baking. But like everything else is also so much description about. Like anytime someone gets dressed, we know exactly how they're dressed and they've done their makeup and they've done their hair. And I'm just not interested in that. And also there's a few, you know, plot, things to do with characters and traits they have that are just way too convenient, okay? But I enjoyed it. <laughs> I really think you have to go into this expecting it not to be great and just hope for a fun time because that's what I did and it meant I had a fun time and I didn't have too high expectations. And listen, it got me in the Bake Off mood. Bake Off is tonight at eight o'clock. I might even watch it live. Wow, crazy. You're crazy, girl. I can't, I've never watched it live. I always just watch it on catch up, but I'm like, oh, I could watch it live. Wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> Cause it's got me in the mood. It's got me excited for Bake Off and it's a murdery Bake Off. I don't think it was incredible. I think I'm going to give it a 3.5. I think landing on a 3.5 feels right because there were moments where I was reading the writing and I was like, oh, that, that wasn't the best. <laughs> you know, it feels very debut author you know, amateur hour. Ooh, God, that's, me that's mean. But like, you know, the writing isn't the best, but I think this is fun. I think if you like cozy mysteries, if you like Great British Bake Off, if you like, this isn't really a murder mystery because there's, you don't know anything for like most of the book. And then the murder happens so abruptly. Like example of things being convenient or things not being plotted correctly is that at the beginning we get told that there's this horrible storm happening while the when the murders just happened right and we reach a point in the book where it's like okay now obviously the murders just happened we got you know move the plot forward we're missing an hour we're like we don't know what happened with any of the characters and in that time a torrential storm has happened 
with no mention of it for the rest of the book. Like, there's no lead up. Like, oh, there's gonna be a storm tonight, or the rain starts. Like, it's normal, we're going out for a jog, we're like all outside, torrential shit pouring rain. <laughs> <laughs> Which, yes, can happen in the UK, but I feel like for a book where, like, you've really opened us up with this storm, you need to kind of lead up to that. Do you know what I mean? You need to, yeah, lead up to that. <laughs> so, 3.5. It's not great, but I did really enjoy it. Now, the next book, when I was meeting my patrons on Saturday and we were talking about me doing this video, I remembered this book slash this series. And I was like, guys, magical realism counts as a separate genre, doesn't it? And I thought of the next in the Before the Coffee Gets Cold series, because this is like one of the only books I own that's shelved as magical realism, <laughs> like on Goodreads. You very rarely, things get shelved, things that are magical realism or fabulism just get shelved as fantasy, whereas this is. So we're gonna go with magical realism as a genre next. And I make progress in a series, guys. I know, we're really proud of me. <laughs> But then after this, I have no clue what we're gonna read. Like zilch, nada. Like I, I don't know what we're gonna read. So yeah, I'm gonna go read half of this. It's about 190 pages. I think it's in four short stories actually. So I'll read the first two and then come and let you know what I'm thinking. But the first one of these made me cry a lot. So I wonder, I wonder if I'll cry with this one or whether it won't quite hit the same. We shall see. So I am over halfway through uh, Tales from the Cafe. I read the first two short stories. So these books are made up of short stories and I've read the first two. So I'm over halfway guys. and I'm really enjoying this. It's not a five star <laughs> right now because I haven't cried. I haven't cried yet. But basically, if you haven't read the first in this series, all you need to know is that it's set at this cafe where if you sit in a particular seat, and drink the tea, you can go back in time, right? But there's a lot of rules surrounding that. It's a very constrained magic system. And that's why I would class it as magical realism or fabulism because it's like very, it's just this one cafe <laughs> we can go back in time. And the person that you want to speak to has to have been to the cafe, so cafe, cafe, cafe. How do you say cafe, cafe? I think you can tell by my face that I'm extremely tired today. They have to have been there. So you're going back in time to when they were there and you can't do anything that changes the future and you have to drink all your coffee before the coffee gets cold is the general idea. And I'm really enjoying this. There's something very quiet and comforting and cosy about these books. Yes, they're sad. I remember crying a lot at the first one. I haven't cried yet, but we've got time. I'm finding this one less sad and more bittersweet, I would say. A sadness, but also a joy to the two stories that we've had so far. And we're kind of also getting to know the characters who work at the cafe and their backstories and the stuff that they've been through. And I'm just really enjoying it. <laughs> I'm really enjoying the reading experience. I'm also listening to the audiobook, which I don't believe I did for um for the first one and i'm really enjoying the audiobook narrator and there's a character there's a young daughter of um <laughs> of the cafe owner and i'm really i love her character i can't remember how much she was in the first one but she's so cute <laughs> In the first story, she she was insisting on referring to herself as moi. <laughs> like, moi will pour this for you now. <laughs> I don't know, it's just she's very funny and cute. And I just think, yeah, I'm really enjoying this. And I have the next two in the series already on my TBR. I own them, so I can, like, read them whenever. But there's just something very slow and comforting. And, you know, I remember feeling like the first book as well. This is touching on really, you know core human 
emotions and experiences that people go through and like stuff that happens a lot to people where you know they'll have a regret be that they didn't say this to their parent or their friend or their their partner or whatever you know and they regret that and it's like almost showing people who ex are experiencing that what it would be like to like go back and and write that or get some closure on that so uh, I am really enjoying it it's not a five star but it's feeling like a lovely read for this evening so I'm gonna go ahead and finish it I don't know if I'll speak to you tonight depends how tired I am <laughs> but I will definitely finish this tonight I've only got like 50 minutes um left on the audiobook so yeah okay so I just finished Tales from the Cafe and I'm gonna give this four stars I really enjoyed it I don't have a ton more thoughts I didn't cry at this one right and the first one I had like bald and you'd think oh that means it's not as good but I appreciated how the topics and the stories in this were a little bit gentler like I was saying in the other clip they weren't you know I think some of the stories in the other one were like meant to make you sob your eyes out <laughs> whereas this one felt a bit softer a bit gentler a bit more um understanding of like the peaks and troughs we go through as humans. But I really enjoyed it. I really like the writing. I'm excited to continue on the series. They're just nice. I don't want to lose that bookmark again. <laughs> They're nice, comforting, cozy reads. But I don't have a ton of thoughts on it other than that. I think I'd love to know about the translation behind this because like some of the stuff, like when the young girl is referring to herself as moi, I wonder, is she actually doing that? Or is there some like term in Japanese that she's referring to herself as that like con like has the same connotations? Or like, I'm just really intrigued by stuff like that. So I'd love to know more about the, um, the act of translating this. But I think like the fantastical world building elements um, have been expanded in a really interesting way in this one. And I just really enjoyed it. Now, now. <laughs> If more pressing matters, I am going to see a concert tonight. I'm going to see Busted. <laughs> if you're not English, you may not know who Busted are, but if you know the Jonas Brothers songs, Year 3000, or what I go to school for, they are not Jonas Brothers songs. And I loved Jonas Brothers as a kid. They are Busted songs that they covered. Sneaky, sneaky. <laughs> it's the troth. And it's like Busted's 20 year anniversary. I was like, three to five. I was obsessed with them. Like, as like a young child. I love Busted. I love Busted. And so they're doing their reunion tour and me and my mum are going today. And I'm so excited. Oh, it's also my first concert at the O2 in probably like 10 years. I might be exaggerating. Maybe like seven years. But I used to love going to the O2. Whenever I used to like One Direction, it would always be at the O2. And I really like the O2 as a venue. So I'm really excited. Um, but yeah, we need to head out. In terms of what I'm gonna be reading today, I actually filmed um, October's TBR Cluedo yesterday, if you haven't seen it yet. And I ended up getting through like a random number selection. I have to read The Ballad of Black Tom. And although that's on my October TBR, that is a horror. And I looked up, the audiobook's only three hours. So I think I'm gonna read that. <laughs> There's nothing wrong. You should get ahead on my TBR, but I think I'm going to read that, even though it's on October's TBR Cluedo, because now is the perfect time to read it. There's not really another vlog that I think it would fit in as perfectly, and we haven't read any horror yet. So I'm going to pick up the audiobook for that and listen to it on the train there and on the train back, because we're about an hour and a half away. So we need to go, but I'm very excited. Take like, it along with me. I can't sit. I'm so, I'm so looking forward to it. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I still love Busted. I listen to their music all the time. So we gotta go, but I will see you in the morning when hopefully I've read The Ballad of Black Tom. But I'm gonna go each pot and then go to a concert. <laughs> to look at me can I like put like Miko over me <laughs> as I talk I don't want to be seen guys 
I'm ill. I'm ill. <laughs> That's so upsetting. So the concert last night was great. We'll talk about it in a second. But on the way to the concert, I could feel, I was like, fuck, I'm sick. Because <laughs> basically my brother's sick. He's bought an illness home from school and I've caught it from him. It's just a cold. But I feel like the first cold of like autumn, winter hits you hard. I've just been sleeping all day. I'm like exhausted. I feel like so drained. I'm hot and cold. I'm like in pain. <laughs> So, and I just feel disgusting. I feel awful. So there's that. <laughs> but the concert was great. Busted were great. I, but like, because I knew I was ill, they had Hanson as a support act. They had like three support acts because they didn't actually, they weren't on stage that long because like they're getting old. <laughs> oh my God. T Central over here. But during the support acts, usually I would like, getting pumped up but I was like mum I'm just not gonna move I'm just gonna sit here and just like reserve my energy <laughs> for when fast had come out but it was really fun it was funny actually because the median age of women there the audience was like mostly 99% women and they're all like the, me the median demographic was like women 10 years older than me because I was three <laughs> It was three when fast had come out. So like the mean age was like, my mum was like 10 years older than the median age of everyone else around us. And I was 10 years younger. We were both like not in, not in the, not in the crowd. But um, anyways, the concert was great. And I read a little bit of the audiobook on the way there. And I finished it off this morning, The Ballad of Black Tom by Victor Laval. I'm not capable of much thought right now. So I'm going to do my best. So this is a retelling of a HP Lovecraft story. And it's about, I don't want to spoil anything. It's a very short book. I think it's, you should almost know nothing going into it. But I'm just so we're following a guy from Harlem in like I want to say the 1920s it's a horror it's a little bit fantastical it's unpacking racism and police brutality and so many things through a historical lens but showing how much that still exists today and that's what I really want to say going into it I think the strongest aspect of this book is its historical elements right how it evokes New York at this time I think it feels I don't feel like there's a ton of description but it feels very vivid even just the way the characters interact with their environment and the way that they perceive things I feel like feels very New York in the 1920s it's like it's a setting I really like I mean I've been thinking a lot about how this I didn't love the whole of the series of the diviners by Libba Bray, um, particularly the second half of the series. I did not enjoy it. But I think that book is really good at a setting and an atmosphere and a moment and evoking an image. And I don't know, I really enjoyed this aspect of the book. But I would say the second half, something happens at the midpoint where the perspective then kind of shifts and a big event happens and it switches more into the horror side of stuff. And I think just because I'm ill, I didn't properly take that in. Like I, I'm kind of like, I know 75% of what happened after that. <laughs> I didn't quite take everything in. So I don't really know how to rate it. I think I'm gonna give it a 3.5. I preferred the second, the first half, sorry. The second half, I didn't like the perspective that then we were then kind of following. Um, but I think what it was saying was very well done. And I would definitely, I'm interested, Lone Women, Lone Woman, Lone Women is the 2023 release from Victor Laval. And I'm interested in that one. So I'd give him another go. I just think my reading of this was hampered a little bit by being sick because I've just slept all day, guys. It's actually a mess. I just The cats have just been lying on top of me and I've been in this bed asleep all day. So I think what I'm capable of right now is pretty pictures for the rest of today. So I've got to read today's book and I have got someone supporting me in what I'm about to do, okay? When I went on Saturday to see my patrons, I bought from Forbidden Planet, The Girl from the Sea by Molly Knox. Os Osser tag? Is that an F or an S? Osser tag, I think. And one of my patrons who was there with me, Sammy, bought this as well. And she read it on the way home, on the train home, and was like, oh my god, I loved it, I almost cried. And then when I was talking about, I do like a post of the videos coming that week, every week on my Patreon. And Sammy commented, let me tell you right now. If you still need a romance, I would definitely say the graphic novel was romance with a hint of fantasy, like you could definitely count it for romance. So, Samantha, this is on you. <laughs> The rules don't apply. I'm gonna count this as my romance pick. But on Goodreads also, it's shelved as like, genre-wise, it's shelved as LGBT, then fantasy, then romance. So I would say it's a sapphic romance with a hint of fantasy, because I think we've got a girl from the sea, obviously. But I think it's prevailing 
atmosphere is romance. So we're gonna count this as romance. I hope that's okay. And I'm just gonna read this tonight. I will film some clips of it probably in the morning of like some of the graphics of it. But I'm just gonna go sit in a dark room and read this and look at pretty pictures. And that's all I can do right now, guys. I'm not capable of reading words. So I'll see you in the morning. Hopefully I'll feel a bit better. And I will see you with my thoughts on this. But I'm very excited. I'm excited to read something so quickly after buying it. Cause I very rarely do that. Especially something I've bought on a whim. So I'm really excited to buy it while it's still fresh. Also, I was earlier, before I fell asleep, I was intending on reading a thriller. And this morning, The Chateau by Jacqueline Goldis arrived. Brittany, one of my patrons sent me this and that's just so kind. And it really, it brightened my morning. <laughs> <laughs> rough morning. So I was gonna read the whole of this today as a thriller because I was like, I just want to read it the day it arrives. Isn't that fun? But I'm not capable of words. So this evening, we're gonna read Girl from the Sea. I will see you in the morning when we'll have one last book to read. <laughs> Am I gonna read a full on novel? Probably not, let's be honest. <laughs> morning I still feel like shit <laughs> I slept terribly I was awake so many times in the night you know when like it felt sorry I've got like a weird light on my chin don't I <laughs> uh Rora's here as well as you've seen oh my god I'm obsessed with her anyways um I was awake so much in the night it felt like almost hallucinatory where I think I've just got to accept the chin light <laughs> um where I'm like in and out of sleep. I think I've had a temperature on and off a little bit the past couple of days. Is this better? I don't know. <laughs> Light is everywhere. <sighs> it's a mess. But I did yesterday read The Girl Who Fell, no, The Girl From The Sea. I would definitely agree that this is a romance with fantasy rather than a fantasy with romance. So I feel good about choosing it as a romance. Basically all you need to know is you've got a girl who can't wait to leave the island. She knows that she's queer, but doesn't want to like let everyone on the island. She wants to wait till she can leave and then live her new life. But then there's this mysterious girl who she starts to fall in love with. It's basically all you need to know. I enjoyed this. I thought the illustrations were beautiful. I thought what it was saying, you know, it's sapphic. I thought what it's saying about being comfortable being yourself, particularly in something like a small town was really beautiful. But I don't know if I felt much. This is something I've been pondering all night because it's beautifully illustrated. I liked the story, but is that enough for a graphic novel? I think graphic novels are difficult to rate or they're easy to rate high, right? They're easy to have an inflated rating because if you like the illustrations, like you like the illustration style, you think it's a cute story. What do I rate this? I think this is nice. I think it's lovely, but like I didn't feel a ton. I think it's a bit forgettable and I think the romance felt a pretty insta-lovey. So I don't know what to rate it because of that. I think I'm gonna settle like a 3.5. I think it's nice. I would recommend it, but I was expecting to like cry or like feel something and I didn't really feel anything, you know? Towards the end, like it's saying stuff about family and standing up for yourself and yada yada. I think it's all lovely, but also, sorry, it's painful talking right now. I need to go take painkillers, so I'm gonna disappear in a second. It was just nice. It wasn't up there for me with Heartstopper, with T Dragon Society, with the Sheets series. Those are my favourite graphic novels, and I just feel like this didn't quite compare in terms of like really making me emotional. So, in terms of genres, we have read fantasy, sci fi, mystery, magical realism, horror, and romance. And I feel like the number one one that is missing, we have had, you know, the fantasy had historical elements, but I want to read a good thriller, right? I want to read a thriller. Push me up against the wall, give me a kiss, then I might get excited. I decided, I slept, I told you guys I slept so badly. I was awake from like four till six. And in that time I decided, okay, I'm not going to edit this vlog. I'm going to push this back a week so that it was supposed to go up this Sunday or go up next Sunday when you're eventually seeing this. So that I don't have to edit today. I was going to have to edit this whole vlog today. And I was like, Megan, you don't need that. <laughs> 
<laughs> like I'm not up to it. I'm probably gonna have to have a nap at some point. I've got reading sprints in my patrons this afternoon. So I've got a lot of stuff off. So I was like, that's the one thing I have in control, in my control to move. So I'm going, I never, you know, I'm usually quite strict to myself and we'll just work through. But also I haven't had a weekend off in weeks and I feel guilty about that when all of my family and Tom, you know, work so hard throughout the week and I want to do fun stuff at the weekend and I'm like, sorry, I'm working. <laughs> so I'm trying to get better at having the weekends kind of off because that's definitely been getting in the way of spending time with those I want to spend time with the past couple of weekends. So that means we can read a whole book today and I'm going to pick up The Chateau, which was very just kindly gifted to me by Brittany. Um, I just want to read it straight away. Again, I feel like I really did enjoy reading this as soon as it came off my TBR. Now, I am going to this. I really wanted to read this. I think the synopsis sounds so interesting. I know we've got a group of friends and there's a murder and there's a chateau, but I did just go look on Goodreads and out of the four friends on Goodreads I have who have left ratings, not just, no, who have left reviews, sorry, not just ratings. We've got a two star, a one star, a one star, and a three star. So I'm a bit nervous. <laughs> but I've wanted to read this the whole year and I feel like sometimes with those kind of thrillers that maybe get a bit ridiculous, people might not like it or whatever, I do end up enjoying it. So we're gonna read this whole thing today. That's the plan for today. And we're gonna cuddle Rora and I will check in with you once I'm halfway through this on what my thoughts are. Okie dokie, so I'm halfway through The Chateau by Jacqueline Goldis. What you need to know about this is that, I think I've kind of already told you the synopsis, got a group of friends who go to one of their grandma's house in France and um, the grandma gets <laughs> get killed. You know that from the beginning, you know that like right at the start and then we travel back in time and go through time and then at the halfway mark the murder has really just occurred and I'm enjoying this producers Ian Casey Musgraves and Daniel I'm enjoying this I've gone into this with quite low expectations because I know it's been getting mixed reviews right it's been a bit of a polarizing thriller I don't think it's not five star for me at the moment but I'm I'm not having a bad time maybe it's because I'm not feeling very well <laughs> and I'm like <coughs> And I'm like dying, no. And I'm like um, just wanting something fun because I think it's kind of fun. Like the south of France and it's drama and it's glamour and like people not telling each other the secrets and the French market. <laughs> and I think it's got a really, it's very readable. And I think it's got a really good mix of, of things that are being hinted at, being teased, being like, oh, you know, not very subtly. <laughs> But they're being teased. That it's making me want to read on. There's things with each of these characters that I'm intrigued about and like wondering how it could go further. And there was stuff to do with the grandma leading up to her death that like raised a lot of questions. And I'm just very excited to see how it all comes together. I don't think it's the greatest work of literature, but like I thought it doesn't have to be that for me. I don't really, you know, I'm not a picky gal. The characters are interesting because that one moment I think they're written really well. And then another moment I think they have no character depth and are like just stereotypes and are not acting as if real people would do how real people would. I I don't know, I'm going back and forth between that. Like there was this scene that just happened where one of the characters admitted something basically unprompted that is like absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> like it's like, it's so, no one would ever in those circumstances fess up that piece of information. I was like, girl, what are you doing? Even though I didn't agree with what she'd done. If you read the book, maybe you know what I'm talking about. I wasn't, I'm definitely not on that girly side. I'm anti her at the moment, well, in general, but, her admitting this piece of information, which is a twist, it, it was just so that the twist could happen and that could propel the story on versus it actually being revealed in an imaginative way, you know? So I do not like it when thrillers do that. At the moment, I'd say it's sitting at a 3.54, depending on how the second half goes. But it's fun, it's a quick read. I'm, you know, I'm having a good time. <laughs> <laughs> and it's mixed perspective and I'm enjoying the mixed perspective. Although I would also say, so we're like going between the perspectives of the girls and also of the um, of the grandma when she was alive. And I would say, apart from the grandma, there was, but for the four girls, there wasn't a vast difference in the narrative voice, right? They're all written tonally the same. And I think if you're gonna do mixed perspective, you can't do that, right? Like you've gotta, they've gotta have a different voice. They've gotta have a different cadence. They've gotta have a different vocabulary. They've gotta have a different way of saying things. And I don't 
really feel like a lot of the women, am I calling them girls? They're women, they're in their 40s. <laughs> I don't think a lot of the women do have that. So mixed opinions. Uh, but I'm going to go finish it and I will probably see you tomorrow morning once I hopefully finish it. I'm going to finish it tonight, but I doubt, I probably will feel rough tonight. So I doubt I'm going to check in with you tonight. So I'll see you in the morning for my final thoughts and the end of this video. Having read seven books in seven days. Why do I do this to myself? <laughs> okay, hey. So it is the next evening. I have been out all day. So I haven't had a chance to feel, but I promise I finished the chateau last night. And... Okay, I'm gonna give this a very, 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 very tentative four. I really enjoyed it, but I had to make myself read it. And I don't know if that's to do, if that's to do with the book, or if that's to do with the fact that I've read seven books in seven days. <laughs> Albeit short ones, consuming that amount of stories in a short space of time does kind of make my brain go like, whoa, you know what I mean? So I'm giving it a four. I know this has been rated low, but for a debut, it's kind of ridiculous and fun, but I did have to make myself read it. I could have easily spent like three weeks reading this. Like I had no inclination to pick it up. I had to make myself pick it up every time. But when I read it, I enjoyed it. So where do we go from here? <laughs> I think some of the twists were really good. I really liked the end twist. I liked how you figure out who's done everything just before the book reveals it. And you kind of go like, ah, you know what I mean? Like, oh, you know, it kind of does that good thing in mystery thrillers where like it you just figure out just before so you feel clever But like really you were supposed to figure out just before it's been revealed, you know But I liked the twist. I liked it There is a little bit of like everything being revealed through letters at the end Which isn't my favorite but like because of how everything played out It's kind of the only way that it could have been done. I enjoyed it. I think for a debut the writing's great. I do think sometimes it gets bogged down in certain scenes, the pacing isn't the best, but I think for a debut thriller, it's not bad. I don't really... Why has everyone hated this? I don't know. And I love women. <laughs> I liked the setting, like the French setting. It had a little bit of drama. No. No. S'il vous plaît. Med. Pourtant. <laughs> sophisticated drama to it so I enjoyed this I feel like my brain I can't review books here anymore like this this week is I always feel like this is the end of the week and let it be known I've got another one coming up in not too long I've got another one of these videos for the end of the year but it's like a combination of this kind of video and another kind of video I do that's all I'll say but um I enjoyed it I enjoyed it I don't know what else <laughs> to say I'm done with this vlog okay guys it's probably 10 years long um but thank you for watching this video I hope you enjoyed it let me know what you thought of any of the seven books <laughs> that I read in this vlog and um yeah if you got to the end make sure you check out my Greece trip that's coming up next year see if you want to come with I am so excited I always want to go to Greece and this itinerary and the trip just sounds incredible so check it out if you haven't already <laughs> whilst watching this video and if you got to the end of the video what should we comment just a heart give me a heart i need the love my brain is done from reading this funny books i'm not built for it um i will see you guys very soon in another video bye